Given the recent events, we thought it would be a good idea to talk to Ambiga. Ambiga Srinivasan is practically a household name in Malaysia. The moment she walks out of the house, whether she's at the courts, at a shopping mall, a wedding reception, and even at the police station, Ambiga, there'll be quite a number of people coming up to take photographs of you. You were a student leader, I think, uh, because you were the head girl of Convent Bukinanas. You went out to be, become a lawyer and then Bar Council President, Chair of Bursi. With all of this experience, uh, what is your reading of the public? Have you seen a change? I think people are very, very concerned about what's going on in the country. Everywhere I go now, uh, people come up to me and say, you know, they express their concern. They say, what can we do? How can we help? So I think there is a general feeling amongst members of the public that, look, we want to do something about this. They're not prepared to just leave it to politicians. I think there is a feeling that the public really want to do something but about talking happening. about politicians, mm. there seems to be a weariness, you know, a kind of a, a sense of failure when it comes to politicians. So do you think we should still believe in this political process? Mm -hmm. Whether we believe in our leaders, I think that's, that's the key question here. And I think, you know, people had so much hope in the opposition, you know, uh, during the elections and so on. And people have sympathies for the uh, opposition because they feel that they're the underdog, they're not given a fair uh, shot at the elections, they are constantly being attacked. Uh, and many of them do a wonderful job, don't, don't get me wrong. I think uh, the chief minister in Penang is doing a wonderful job, uh, Azmin is doing a wonderful job in Slango, uh, given all the problems. But having said all that, what, what's disappointing actually is that they don't seem to be able to pull together anymore. But the recent squabbling has completely undermined their credibility. And you know what's the tragedy? They don't see it. And, and uh, they don't see that this open fight and open warfare is actually causing people a lot of concern because the question is, can you be the alternative government? There are some very, very good people in the opposition. We certainly, I mean, looking at the present cab cabinet, uh, there are certainly better people in the opposition. So it can be done. The question is whether they want it badly enough, whether they're prepared to pull together. And you know what? It's not about them. It's about us. It's our dream. And they're squandering our dream for a better Malaysia. That's what and, really and, gets to And I remember to me. one of the most <laughs> profound things that you said right after uh, Bursi 2. You said that Malaysians no longer fear. Yes. You know, and that's one of the things that Malaysians really are ready for change. They are ready for change. And yet, Ambika, you have been hauled in by the police. You're yeah. not very popular with the police. Tell us about that experience with the police. You've been, as recent as a few days ago, you yeah. were called in for a police statement. Statement, yeah. That, that was all right, actually. Uh, I was treated very well. You know, they asked me questions. And actually, a lot of the questions were about the Hakam plan of action that we had of Hakam, yes. That's right. But the last time when I was hauled in for questioning and then kept overnight at the police station, now that was a completely different experience. Yes. <laughs> you were there, Ivy, so you know. <laughs> Till 4, 8, 5 a.m., yes. Five, yeah, ridiculous. And I but tell us about that. I think it was yes. a, a, well, Quite an intimidating, frightening, and yet very empowering, I think. Yeah, too. I wasn't afraid, actually, honestly. I, I've gone past fear, let me tell you, on a lot of these uh, issues, right? And I'm, I'm, I'm not intimidated by any of that. But I was annoyed. I was very angry because they called me in for a statement. I went in early enough for them to have taken the statement and released me. But they stalled and stalled and stalled uh, taking a statement because clearly the objection, uh, objective was to send me off to prison overnight. Uh, when they tried to do that, I resisted. And I said, no, I'm not going. Why should I go to your lockup? I will stay here. You take my statement, even if it's still whatever time in the morning. Right. So we kept resisting. And, and what was interesting to me, actually, right. is that perhaps uh, because together with me were uh, Tony Poa and, uh, uh, no, not Tony Poa, Anthony Lok. Anthony Lok, that's and, right. Yeah. Uh, Arul. And Arul. And Arul. And you know, Arul was like, oh, just send me to the prison for God's sake, I want to sleep, you know. And I was like, <laughs> hold on a minute, you know. Surely you can't agree to being sent off to prison. But many people do. And uh, maybe they have their own reasons for that. But I think you have to resist it. Because you are, don't deserve to be there. You're not a criminal. You don't deserve to be in prison. So that's what I did. Mm -hmm. And with all that resistance by me, and of course my, my lawyers and so on, 
they actually didn't send me to Jinjiang prison like they did yes. with the other two. But they kept the me magistrate at, turned down the remand, refused to remand. No, right? I, yeah. overnight they kept me at uh, at Dangwangi. It was one night, yes. yes, yeah. And then they sent me, and not in the lockup even, uh, mm. in in a room. And then the next day, and you were not wearing orange. I was not wearing orange, and I was not barefoot. That's the other thing, by the way, that gets to yeah, me how yeah, everybody is deliberate. Needed. I think yes, it's humiliation. Yes, it's they want to humiliate you, and that's why I resist because I will not be humiliated. What is your message for Malaysians, Abiga? For me right now, it's about speaking truth to power. And I think Malaysians must continue to do that. And that this is where I'm so proud of civil society because they've stepped up and they have filled in some of these leadership gaps. So I think what I would say to Malaysians is, we, this is our destiny. Right. And we need to take it into our own hands uh, to some extent. And I think, actually, Malaysians are prepared. I have never seen them so ready, Ivy, to determine the course of the future of this nation. And now I'm not saying through violence or anything, no. no. Yes. They will do whatever uh, is required peacefully, peacefully. to, to uh, you know, to state their views, which is why, you know, I when, when people like uh, the former DPM, etc., and even Tun Mahathir, talk about Amno surviving. I'm so disappointed because I expect a, a statesman to talk about the nation, right? Yes. Not about a party, not about the opposition. Mm. This is about our future. And this is where I feel they forget. Yeah. They forget sometimes that it is our future they're talking about. Yes. And uh, so that's what I would say. I would say to Malaysians, be hopeful because honestly, given the, the reactions of the public that I have seen, it's, it's amazing. And you know what it is? They all want Malaysia to work. They want Malaysians to be united. And it's the people who are saying that. And that's why I think there's tremendous future for this nation. Thank you so much, Ambika. <laughs> you. Ambika, you're not only a civil society leader, but a true patriot. Thank, Thank you. you. That's wonderful. Thank you, Ivy. <laughs>